Oh, hi, Dr. Colombo. Hello, good uh, afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon. And, uh, okay. Thank you mm -hmm. to the Could Assam you introduce team. Your team and cases? Yeah, uh, yes. on my right, uh, Dr. Kang, who is going to uh, introduce uh, and describe this patient. And thank you again uh, for having me as a guest uh, in this wonderful uh, l laboratory. Yes. <laughs> I will introduce our patient. Okay. He is a 52-year-old male, admitted for E40 angina. His coronary risk factor was hyperlipidemia. Treadmill test showed positive result, and coronary angiogram showed significant left main bifurcation disease. Next. He has a hyperlipidemia. Next. And the echocardiography showed normal LV systolic function and treadmill test showed positive result at stage 4. And the, the diagnostic CAG showed the left main disease with normal right coronary angiogram. Syntax score was 16. Next. The patients are taking aspirin, clopidogrel, and statin, and a calcium channel blocker. Next. Yeah. Okay, so you see this uh, image is, uh, uh, I th what do you see, the right or the left now? Oh, uh, yes, this, the right coronary so angiogram is The right corner is unremarkable. Yeah. Uh, the left system is taken now with a six French guiding catheter from the right femoral. I believe you see the spider, the caudal RAO. Can we show another projection? Yes. That is the standard RAO with some caudal. So I think it's uh, clear that there is a left main uh, narrowing. The narrowing is critical. Uh, I don't think we need FFR. Next. Okay. The LED looks, looks fine. So it's a real uh, uh, discrete lesion of the left main. The circumflex is a big vessel. So we need uh, to take it seriously. And the disease seems to be confined to the left main, at least angiographically. Uh, while uh, waiting, uh, uh, we placed uh, two wires, one in the LED and one in the uh, main uh, uh, OM, more than the circumflex, because uh, by protecting the OM, uh, we protect also the circumflex. And we did IVUS on both uh, branches. Uh, maybe uh, you can describe yes. uh, the IVUS. Can you please show the LAD IVUS? We check the IVUS from the proximal uh, LAD. And you can see the vessel size is about 3.5. And just proximal LAD, the disease begins without extent, uh, with a, a concentric calcification. <coughs> Here, this the left main, very tight disease, and vessel size is about 4.5. The disease is very uh, the, in the, the LAD main bifurcation. So we did also yeah. IVUS on the circumflex. Yes. Can you please show the circumflex pullback? This is the run from the circumflex. You can see the circ proximal circumflex is well preserved without disease. This is the uh, OM pullback, and you can see the proper circumflex is coming. And still very clear vessel without disease. And 7 o'clock, there is no disease. And very proximal circumflex, there is focal disease to left main. We are now in the left main. So uh, in, uh, in my practice, I don't think uh, this based on IVUS was really necessary. Uh, we don't really acquire any new information besides the angio. I would have uh, considered the LED 3.5, the left main 4. Uh, I think the circumflex was clearly focal from the angio as well. 
So the plan is to predilate uh, LED and left main with a 3.5 non-compliant balloon and be provisional on the circumflex after stenting uh, uh, the left main to or the LAD. Okay. So any question or the comments from the panel? Any other ideas? Of oh, I think in my, in my place we'll do exactly the same, probably with a witai versus as uh, Antonio said. So oh. this is a 3.5 uh, NC balloon, 15 in length, a small test. Test, yeah. Okay, I think we can inflate. Inflate, no matter. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh. Okay, just try to inflate a little bit slow. Yes. Okay. okay. It's fine. Go to 20. 20. 20. Okay. Stay up. Okay, deflate. Deflate. So we did one inflation at 20 atmospheres. The first one kind of slipped forward. I think we can take a picture and uh, decide uh, if this predilatation is sufficient. Ready? Ready. It's okay. I think there is a little bit of a dissection. Yes. Which is fine, uh, which is uh, as, uh, as we expect, which means that the lesion is well dilated. We can remove the balloon. We can go with the stent. Yes. I don't think so far uh, the side branch did not deteriorate. Can you show it again? Can you run again? You see the side branch did not deteriorate, so we yes. keep our original plan. Yes. Sometimes we change the plan yes. after the predilatation, but in this case, uh, no need to change the plan. Can we take a 3.5 uh, stent? We decided to put a Sierra. 3.5, we're gonna post dilate 4 approximately, maybe even 4.5, but for the LED, I think 3.5 is a appropriate size. And uh, if we have to do uh, stenting of the circumflex, which I doubt, we will do uh, T stenting. It's very favorable for T stenting. But uh, I really think 90% we should be able not to stain the circumflex. Okay, this is a 3.5 Sierra. We don't need to cover the ostium of the left main. We're gonna stop in the middle of the left main. The left main is very big. Okay, do a good test. Test two. Okay, I think we can inflate there. Go up. Inflate. Go up. Twelve. Slowly. Slowly. Okay, go yeah. up. Go up. Twelve. Ten, fifteen. Fifteen. Can you send a better? Three point seven. Eighteen. Eighteen. I like to keep it up for ten, twenty seconds. Blood pressure is stable. Okay, 18. 18. Okay, down. Down. If I, if I can make a comment about this inflation, uh, it has been demonstrated that a stand cannot be deployed in five seconds. So I think it's an important point to remember that you are not reaching the diameter in five seconds. So 20 yeah, seconds. Yeah. Even you can repeat a second time or a third time, but uh, if uh, hemodynamic is concerned. I think it's an important, sometimes people, because it's the left main, go up and down, bang, bang. But uh, I don't think you, you, you can uh, relax and uh, take your time. Sorry, how, how long is the stand? 15. Okay, so ready for picture? So there is uh, the classic pinching uh, of the circumflex, yeah. um, 
I think uh, we need uh, to recross into the circumflex. Uh, I mean, I, I would not, uh, I would not do FFR of the circumflex. <laughs> mm. I don't like uh, to leave this pinching. Uh, it's like uh, it's uh, an aesthetic. Uh, yeah. uh, I don't like. So I'm going to do kissing, uh, no matter what. Uh, okay. I don't care what the FFR is. <laughs> so let's get a uh, wire. A wire. Antonio? Just in a, yeah. Antonio, uh, do you think this is only uh, because of the carina that uh, uh, not chipping plug? I the don't know. I mean, uh, I've been, uh, we have been debating uh, for years if it's carina, how much is carina, how much is shaft. Uh, I think I like to think that uh, it's a little bit of both, uh, a little bit of carina shift, uh, but it doesn't look nice. Uh. If, if my surgeon sees this circumflex, they want to take uh, the patient for bypass. So where's that guy, the wire? Uh, this is a universe, uh, the BMW. BMW, okay. BMW. Do you, think, do you think you'll get better expansion of the osteum if, if your wire went down the uh, circumflex rather than the intermediate like OM branch? Hmm, that's uh, What do you think? I don't know. But uh, maybe the balloon may get uh, uh, too much to, to curve and maybe we'll dissect, I don't know. I try to, to avoid uh, dissection because if I have a dissection, then I have to stent. A quick question, would you consider doing a pot first before you recross? Um, not, not really. I will do if I have difficulties uh, to recross. Okay, so this is the circle, this yeah. is the LED, this is the other circle that we take it out, take out. So this is the wire in the circle that I just put in. So let's take uh, a trio uh, non-compliant, no, so semi-compliant, let's go a trio semi-compliant to do dilatation on the circle. And uh, we can do the kissing with the same 3.5 uh, yes. that we used to predilate. So we go with a brand new uh, trio semi compliant, 12, 15, whatever you have. 15. 15. Okay. Did you choose a semi compliant because you think it's more likely to cross than a non compliant? Yes, exactly. Exactly, and I don't, I don't want to do a high pressure dilatation. I just want to give a little bit of massage. <laughs> okay, let's, uh, let's prepare also the three point, open another in the flat. Yeah, let's prepare the 3.5, the, the same uh, that we used to predilate. Yes. I mean, technically, yeah, it's okay, 3.5, we can hang a little bit proximally because it's very big, uh, so we're not going to dissect. We don't want to make sure that we don't go outside the stent. Okay. Let's prepare the 3.5 also. So the balloon goes down very well. Okay, I think it's okay. We can take an inflation, go up to... 12. Yes. This would be a, a, a gentle massage. 12. 12, 14. 14. 3.3. Okay, down. Down. Okay, let's go with the 3.5. We'll do kissing. Any comments so far? I think it's an elegant procedure and I believe that what Dr. Colombo performed is based on the previous several trials and consensus of left men by vocation stenting. So uh, I, uh, my, uh, I, my preference now for the ostium of the circumflex, uh, even, uh, even if I have to go with the uh, two stents, uh, is to use uh, provisional uh, and uh, dilate uh, and place the stent with a T procedure because uh, with a T uh, technique. 
it's a little bit friction because this has been used, uh, this 3.5, but it's going to go. Okay, are we negative? Yes, yeah. negative. Yeah, negative. Keeping negative? Yes, we're keeping negative. Okay. If you have to use the three wires, I will use the seven French, yes. no question. You can do with six French, but becomes a pain in the neck. You have a lot of friction. It's a, it's a pain. Okay, let's do a, Let's make sure that we are not too f advanced. Let's come back a little bit with the 3.5. Okay, let's inflate first uh, the circle. Circle. Yeah, not too high pressure. Go to six, six. eight. Okay, and let's inflate the 3.5. Yeah. Okay, go to 10, 15 with 10, the 3.5. Okay, 10. go to 18 with the 3.5. Okay, stay up. Yep. You see how much they tolerate uh, this left main uh, yeah. you know, blood pressure. Mm. When the blood pressure starts going down, we deflate. <laughs> okay. Okay. So deflate both. Okay. Ah, both. Okay. And uh, I like to remove the two balloons together. Like uh, I'm using one single balloon. I take the two balloons in one hand and the two wire in the other end. And then I come back. I have to hold the wire very strong because the friction is, is quite significant. Of course, if you work with the seven French, it's a little bit uh, less, but it's okay. Okay. We're gonna do uh, maybe an inflation uh, with the four O approximately, and then we're gonna do an IVUS. I'm going to do an IVUS at the end after the fall because I know that if I do it now, I'm going to have malaposition. Maybe with the kissing, we did some improvement, but uh, yeah. a short fall will be okay. Uh, maybe after the fall, we yeah. may have to do another kissing just for the aesthetic uh, because <laughs> the circuit is going to still uh, deteriorate a little bit. Let's take a picture. Yes. Ah, looks nice, eh? I think it's fine. Uh, I like this. It's just a matter of uh, visual appearance. <laughs> I mean, uh, Great. I, I, I know that uh, the FFR was most probably negative, but, uh, you know, it's okay. Uh, the balloon is less expensive than the FFR wire. Uh, can I have a four for all semi-compliant, semi-compliant, short, the shortest you have. Do you plan to cross the eight. origin of the circumflex or stay proximal? I try to stay proximally, but you know, I'm not gonna be able to be so precise. Yeah. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna cross this, so. Okay, so yeah. we're taking the So uh, I don't know if you want to go to another room and come back, uh, because uh, this is gonna be quite uh, standard. Uh, uh, Maybe we're going to do the 4 o inflation and then we do IVUS only towards the LED, no IVUS on the circumflex. Yeah. And if the LED is okay, it's finished. Uh, if it's uh, left main. If the left main is not opposed well, we'll yeah. do another. I use a semi compliant because I really want to take advantage of the opposition. We are not doing this dilatation to crash the plaque. Yeah. We are just doing this dilatation to make the metal uh, go against uh, the wall. So uh, yes. semi-compliant is better. Yes. Do we have it? Okay, Dr. Yeah. Coloma, we'll be back, okay? Okay, yeah. mm -hmm. they, they are getting the, the phone. Oh, another room. room, please. Yeah, Dr. Bradley, James Bradley. Hello, yes. hi. Hi. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, do this first. Oh, this first. 
Uh, I will introduce our case. A okay. uh, 58 year old male was admitted for upper chest pain. He underwent PCI at proximal LAD and mid ICA eight years ago. After three years, he underwent PCI at left main <laughs> to proximal so again. Two months ago, he had chest pain. Therefore, he underwent PCI for ISI at proximal SOC, but paid PCI at proximal LAD ISI region. So he referred to our hospital. Our coronary angiogram showed patent left main to proximal stand, but signaled the ISI region at proximal LAD osteum. Next. His current inspector is diabetes, hypertension, hyperdipidemia, and his clinical presence is tape angina. Next. His echocardiography is normal average is function. And we check coronary angiogram, left coronary angiogram show patent stand left main to proximal stop and significant ISR at proximal LAD. His FF5 value is 0.42. And the right coronary angiogram showed patent stand and BDRCA. His syntax square is 21 points. This is ICA. ICA is patent stand and BDRCA. We're going to. Uh, to treat proximal ISI region. Well, what does the panel uh, think of all this? Any comments or ideas? About Have these arteries been beat up enough? Should, is it time for surgery or is there something to rescue here? No well, surgery. <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't be here. So he has a very short, discreet osteo. LAD okay. in stent yeah. restenosis. So. He does. He's got two layers of stent from the main to the circ, and then one into the LAD. So there's a lot of stent in that uh, distal uh, what, main. Uh, uh, sorry, I have a comment. Uh, if you are, is uh, I see the double layer coming from uh, left main to circumflex, okay. and the uh, other stent in the LAD. And uh, my impression is that the, the left main is not big enough, was not big enough with the stents. Yeah. You know, you, have, uh, you don't have the, the three diameters there. You have uh, in left main the same diameter as is in circ, and this is not three diameters. So maybe you, it is a factor of, uh, of restenosis at the ostium of the LED. And now we have already two layers in the LED. It will be very difficult to stand the LED uh, at the ostium. So if you plan to stand the LED, you will go for a, a kind of culotte uh, in two times. Uh, so three layers in the left main, which is too much. So I my, op my option will be to do a uh, regulating balloon in the LED. Okay. You don't that was our thought as well after uh, trying to prep this. It's, we, we ivised the left main into the LED. Why don't we show that next? LED ivised was... Of course, we had to put a, take a small balloon just to get the IVUS catheter through the distal bifurcation. Somebody want to describe the IVUS findings? Uh, this is LAD pullback. Uh, this is the media LAD. The first step is maybe 3.0, more, more 3.0 or 3.5. And ten is relatively similar to 10. It's proximal LAD. They come to LA, left main. This. Uh, this is proximal stem part, LAD. Maybe there's maybe the LTV similar stem. This is classified region, and this gap of wood stem just proximates the ostium. And come here. This is proximal stand and circumflex. This is the main and circumflex come in. And this is in IS region. And that is to small stand in maybe on this patient. Its mechanism is ISR. No, MRA is maybe it's five or six more. And Left main shaft is the relative pre region. So, what do you want to do? Well, we've uh, 
we wanted to prep this as best we can. We couldn't get an IVUS catheter through that stent mangle uh, turn. Um, so we've why don't we go forward on the angel? We'll show what we've done so far. Can somebody? Uh, uh, let's start the show from Taipei. Uh, would you consider to use the OCT to evaluate this uh, 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 OCT uh, uh, ISR and uh, give get more information about the, uh, the stand information around the lamp man and also uh, the, uh, the bifurcation area. So here's high pressure of circumflex. and high pressure of LED. And just before we went live, we had two 30NC 15 balloons prepared <coughs> for, high, for a kissing inflation. So why don't we do that now? Which this is a complete LED. LED. OK. So let's do that now okay. while everyone is talking. What? Simultaneously. Let's take them simultaneously. OK. Oh, let's kiss. Let's go to 10. Four, oh. eight. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and down. One, two, three. And which one's LED? TT LED. Okay. So I'm not sure if we've adequately modified this yet, but we did 20 plus atmospheres on the LED and then we did a kiss. Okay. Why don't we see what it looks like now? Okay. You ready Angel? for uh, Angel? Ready? Inject. Inject. Okay, good. So let's open more. No, do you plan to do a pot now? Like, yeah, I, I think, think we need to do a pot. to give three diameters to this bifurcation. Yeah, I, I think we need to do a pot on the, the mid to distal left main. What size do you want to go? 4.0, 4.5? 4.5, in my opinion. At least 4.5. What do you think? I think 4.5. 4.5, I think so. I think it's that big and yeah. very proximal. So do we have a, a 4.5, 12NC? Okay. Let's take these out. 4.2. Main, main eight, eight, eight. Main 4.5? Yeah. What do you think? 4.5 NC? 4.0. Oh. What does the panel think size-wise? Let's go back to the IVIS and yeah. measure our main. But it's at least, I mean, the, the, the daughters are at least 3.0. Okay. Can somebody show me the left main IVIS again? The, the kissing was done by two three point five? Two three O's. Two three O's. This this circumflex so is a two seven five. So the left main is at least four zero. Probably exactly. more. Four zero. Probably okay. more. Four yeah. Maybe four N C button. Alright, we'll do a four oh twelve NC. Oh okay, shop button. Four. Four shop button, you say. Five minutes. Yeah. Ten minutes, I'm sure. Ten minutes. Ten minutes, I'm sure. Five minutes, sure. Ten minutes, sure. And would you do the drug color balloon is with a kiss with the NC and the circ at the same time, or would you do it uh, by itself? Uh, that's brand new. No. So uh, we'll be back. Uh, we are gonna move to another room, and we'll be okay. Yeah. Okay, great. We'll keep working. No. Dr. Colombo? Yes, sir. So, uh, so on the LED? Okay. We, are, uh, we completed the procedure. Okay. We did uh, a proximal inflation mm -hmm. with a four balloon, uh, eight. Can you show? Uh, next. Next. Okay, this is a four. We inflated a 22 atmosphere. I think we covered the ostium of the circumflex. It's very difficult uh, to be so precise, it's fine. And then after this inflation, we took a picture. The ostium is maintained. Then uh, we did an IVUS from the LED towards the left main, which yes. we'll show you. Yes. Can you please show? Yes. OK. This is the LED pullback after kissing and high pressure balloon. You can see that proximal LED, distal stand edge is clear, well opposed, and well expanded. And you can see the here proximal LED, circumflex is coming from 6 o'clock, circumflex yeah, also shock. is very clear. Yes. And distal left main, stand is well expanded, 
up to 4.0 diameter, and this is the proximal edge of the stand. So can you show a couple of pictures? We took uh, traditional uh, three pictures because uh, you can always have surprises, you never know. So we went to the Cour de la Réon. Next. Oh, sorry. No, go the other way. Okay. Here it looks fine. And always look distally because the wires sometimes go outside the corners. Okay, and this is the cranial. It's fine. The wire is in the septal, but it's okay. Yeah. Great. You okay. saved the bunny. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, congratulations. Okay. That was a, okay. a splendid example of how to do provisional stenting. And uh, it's remarkable, isn't it, that the side branch, the circumplex, was really severely stenosed, but it responded so beautifully to kissing. And yeah. also, Dr. Colombo demonstrated that you can keep in, uh, kissing balloons inflated in the left main for a considerably long time without the patient suffering. Yeah, yeah. You have to look at the blood pressure. But then, then you do good conditioning also. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> thank you very okay, much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, let's move to another room. Uh, okay. How is it going so far? So we, uh, we just parted the... Main with a 4 ONC balloon at a very high pressure. Now we're re ivising the osteo LED. Is the LED pullback? We performed a 3 O NC balloon. We did kissing 3 O NCs based on the original IVIS. We want to see if it's adequately prepped for the drug coated balloon. A four o'clock. This left main we four NC balloon, twenty pressure, maybe four two. Okay, it looks like it was pretty well okay. open, okay. huh? Okay. Want to stop the IVIS? Can we replay that and focus on the osteo lesion? What part is that? DC. 3-0. Would we want to measure at the osteo LED on the IVIS? See what our this is the POC MLA is. Oh, this type of main. Maybe lumen is a three O more. So you think it's osteo? Uh, excuse me, and uh, the, the LED just LED uh, has uh, uh, stent already previous in the uh, yes okay already the uh, it's just Austin yeah uh, the which technique performed the this previous stenting crush ah oh. uh, no crush no crush T stent oh, okay oh outer hospital we have uh, insufficient information about. We leave your NGO, but no yeah, it was eight years ago at an outside institution, so we don't know the hmm. first technique. Hmm. But the question to the panel is this adequately prepped to now treat with the DCB? There's still a considerable osteostenosis, isn't there? More inspired. Uh, I think, it, what did we get a measurement? Two, four by three, two, what was that? Maybe uh, about six, osteum. LED osteum is, so MLA is the six. Seven point. Where is that? 
this area of steam? Yeah, so two, three by three, five, it's very oh, yeah. centric. Uh, but maybe we maybe six. We could go with the bigger balloon. Oh, yeah. Some 3.5 NC or 4 NC balloon. We, we could do a 3.5 in the LED and a 3.0 in the circ. Okay. 3.5 LED or 3.5? I think the LED is 3.5. NC 3.0 is so complex. Let's try circuit flex first. Okay. Okay. This is circuit flex. This is complex. Balloons have a lot, a lot of trouble making that turn. We've had to anchor to get in there. Okay, anchor again. Yeah, we'll anchor LED. again. Anchor, go, go, throw it, go, anchor, take it. Second there. Uh, James, what yes. Do you, what do you think about the, the mechanism of this re-stenosis? Is too many stents. Yeah, yeah. First, too many stents, but this is uh, neonatal hyperplasia or is neoatherosclerosis? <coughs> oh, I think it's it was neonatal hyperplasia, um, uh, but in a maybe undersized, underexpanded yeah, stent. Too small size. And uh, would you think about a DCB balloon? Uh, Maybe. Well, we plan to do with DCB, but we want to make sure we've adequately prepped it before doing that. Okay. Because this is probably the last chance we're going to have to correct this problem. He's got three stents there. Why are we talking about okay. Kind of in the distal LED, prox, circ, and LEDs. Distal main, excuse me. So it's getting a little crowded. We don't know the clinical consequences of uh, non-respect uh, of uh, three diameters uh, anatomy. But from uh, from simulation, we know very well that when we increase, LED. you increase the two distal segments. You are increasing the vascular surface, the, the vascular surface, and doing that, you are creating zone of low wall shear stress, which is a promoter of uh, neonatal hyperplasia, neoatheroma, and so on. So I think. Uh, I've not seen okay. at the beginning the three diameters. I've seen two, one big cube and a small cube. More advanced to be there. Where's the uh, circle? The circle Yeah, okay. okay. Hold the wires. Okay. I'm getting almost no guide support. Okay, where's the LED? LED, this is LED. Right here, okay. 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 More in advanced. You like that? Okay. In play. Six. Eight. Wire. Four. 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 This is a complex. Turning that corner on the circle is extremely difficult. Which is the circle? Oh, why is this? Is okay. Presumably yeah. that's a, a non compliant balloon, is it? Yeah. A used one. So, balloon's down. So what about, what about More. your first inflations with a semi-compliant and then maybe a non-compliant will pass? Okay, where's the circle? This is fire. Okay. Yeah, that balloon maybe beat up too much. Okay, LED. Fortunately, the guide is almost giving no support whatsoever. And OK, 
You want to try that? Can I just ask a question? Circumflex is an old stand and there was not a lot of disease. So why is it absolutely essential to do a kissing uh, technique here? Uh, it's not. The circumflex stand is an old stand, right? And there was not a lot of disease. Well, so couldn't we just focus on doing the proximal okay. LED and not, okay. not touch the circle? Okay. Personally, I would, I would do it, but to avoid the carina shift, not okay. as deep as this. Let's take the LED balloon down. It is 3.5. Where's the LED? This? CT LED. Okay. In play? All right, let's take this out. Oh. Well, we just struggled to get it in, so... This is 3.5. Huh? Oh, this is 3.5? Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. I thought you were angry with the 2.0. I just pulled out the balloon we wanted to use. Okay. Okay, let's do a high pressure inflation there. So we're 16. going higher on the uh, original 16. lesion. Well, you still got a waste there. Do you want to go higher? Okay. 20. Where's you? 20. It's a little better. Okay. What do you have? This is 20. Do you want to go a little higher? Yeah. Pretty good. 24. Do you okay. have access, access to shockwave in Korea? No. In the U.S., we only have it in a trial. Uh, okay, you want to go with drug holding balloon now? Okay. Or do you want to re this? Drop balloon. Okay, drop balloon. 3.5? I think we should. I don't what think length we're... of drop balloon? Huh? Do you, what do you want length of drop balloon? What length? What are the choices? Uh, we don't have drug coated balloons in the U.S. for coronaries. Hmm. So I don't know the choices available. Okay, let's take some. Oh, we don't need more than 20. Is that the shortest? 3.5. You have a 3.5? Yeah. 3.5. Oh, watch your LED bar. That's okay. Push it back. Go ahead, push it back. 3.5, 20, 3.5, 20. Oh, 3.5, 20. Okay. Can you get this out now? Why are we talking? Ready? Okay. Oh, maybe stop. Stop. These are some beat up arteries. So what's the judge, the uh, verdict on whether to kiss it or not? We thought all along we would kiss with the drug coated, but I, I don't have a lot of experience with the drug coated balloons. Would you start with a non-kiss on the drug coated and then kiss at the end? Do you feel you've prepared the ostium of LAD well enough? Well, I just did 3.5 at 24 atmospheres. Um, I don't think we can go much bigger or higher. What about a cutting balloon? We could. I, angiographically, it, it appeared to give at that high pressure. This should be. Okay. Ready? Yeah, 3.520. Ready? Oh. Yeah. 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 Okay, I heard why. Is there a DCB? Yeah, DCB. Yes, DCB. Okay. 3.520. Mm -hmm. And how, do you leave these up for long inflations? What do people do? What's that cut? In play? Go ahead and play. No, me, I'm a chair. Seven. 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 Time over here. How long do you want to leave it up? Is it 30 seconds? 30 or more. 15. Yeah, 30 to a minute. 45. Okay. There is a little waste, I hear, I see. Um, 30 seconds. But short of lasering that, I don't know what's going to break that waste. Oh, how much time? Okay, watch it up. Come on down. 10. 45. 45. Okay. Different? Yeah, done. 
And then you want to kiss with this one? Okay. Kiss. I don't know if it's... This is so complex? Yeah. Why is black one is so Which so one is the circle flex balloon? This is so complex, why? Which balloon? This one? Yes, this is so complex. Okay. Okay. Okay, let's take them up. Here in 10, we have 6 months. Okay. 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 You pray? Just for, yeah, that's good. Okay, okay down. Down. One, two, One, two three. Alright, would the panel like us to IVIS the LED? Uh, we'd love to see the IVIS of LED. Okay, we'll do it next. Okay, we'll okay. finish the... Uh, which kind of uh, drug coated balloon uh, it is? Sequent freeze. Pakistan is a balloon. You don't have in Korea the Sirolimus one? No, we only Pakistan is a balloon. In Europe, we even have uh, a drug eluting scoring balloon oh. with, with uh, Sirolimus. Is there a concern with the paclitaxel given the peripheral uh, alarms that were set off a few months ago? I don't think we have any info about that. But, uh, no. Is it just noise or was it a real drug issue? I don't know. <laughs> okay. 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 Let's go with the IVIS on the LED. Okay. Can we have just an angio before the IVOS? Sure. Let's get the guy up. Test. 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 Okay. okay. Ready for a shot? Inject. Okay. Yeah. Hey, graphically it looks better. Yeah. And you look good. You see still, uh, I think that the, the left main is proportionally too small regarding the two distal beds. We could pot it with a 4-5. Let's see what the IVIS says. Oh, IVIS is going to be a little beat up. This runner? Huh? Just five. The wires might be wrapped. There you go. Okay. 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 Okay, so this is proximal LED coming back. Coming close to the os here, I think. Okay. There's the Rossi. POC. So called to call me. This is the main. We're the main now. It definitely opened more. Oh. We'll get a measurement for you in a second. Uh, the, the left main is better too. Do people want to take the main bigger? Main. It looks pretty open. Okay, we stop there. Let's uh, make a measurement on the Austral LED. Yeah. LED was team Seven. 
Okay. Good. So we got seven? Mm, seven point one man. One more. I think that's acceptable. Okay. Does the panel think we're done? Do it's hard to think. Oh, maybe. Oh, eight. It's left the main. It is that was left main. Eight, eight, oh. eight, oh five. Mm. Eight, five on eight the main. Mm. Enough. Good eight. It looks very good, excellent. I think it's time to, to stop. Let's do a spider projection. Okay. Okay, ready? Okay. Inject. You can see the eccentric nature of the LED, but by area, it's, it's much more open. Yes, and it's hard to think how you can make it any better. I think, I think you'd have to laser it or some other type of expansion. It, but uh, hopefully this is uh, good for now. Oh, good enough. Maybe all of six. Okay, any other comments from the panel? Hmm. Any comments? What? Well, so what kind of types of stem did the patient have at the time of index PCI? It was eight years ago, uh, so we, we, whatever DS platform, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. We don't have information, we don't have that information. about stem. But you can see in this projection the the two layers right across the, the distal main and into the circ and then the other one in the LED. So there's a tremendous burden of metal in that uh, distal bifurcation. Okay, let's hope the drug okay. works. Okay. Thank, yeah, you. thank you. Well done. Thank you. 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 So now, uh, are we finished. So now we're going to have Terry Lefebvre uh, give us a lecture, which is non-left main bifurcation. Keep it open. Thank you very much, John. It's a pleasure to be here, and. Uh, I will talk about non left main bifurcation, keep it open. Uh, I think it's a very important uh, discussion. So, as you know, there is two levels of risk with the side branch. The first one is the risk of acute or subacute side branch occlusion. And the second one is to leave a significant residual ischemia. So, I, I will discuss about both. So, periposodial MI in bifurcation is relatively frequent as compared to non-bifurcation. You can see in this uh, Dutch peers trial with uh, a second generation stent, you have a double uh, rate of periprocedural MI as compared to non-bifurcation. The same with in the twin trial, they look carefully at the, the rate of periprocedural MI and you can see it was 9.6% in true bifurcation as compared to 4.7% in non-true bifurcation. So more, more MI in bifurcation lesions, and even more when it's a true bifurcation lesion, 111 or 011 according to Medina. So very important to keep it open to prevent PA procedural MI, protect the side branch that you'd want to lose with a, with a wire to, to simply. So the presence of a wire in the side branch decreases the risk of side branch occlusion. It was shown in two studies. It's a good marker of the side branch ostium in case of occlusion, so in order to, to be able to reopen the side branch. It facilitates side branch access because you modify the angle between both branches. And of course, at the end, if you are not able to succeed to reopen the side branch, the gel wire can be used to reopen the side branch. Second point, very important to prevent preprocedural MI is to respect the fractal law. So use a stent 
according to the distal reference of the bifurcation, so distal main branch, and then do a pot proximal to the bifurcation, and by doing that, you decrease the risk of carina shifting, so you decrease the risk of occlusion of the side branch. Uh, of course, as you know, keep it open strategy is part of the provisional strategy. So uh, provisional strategy, just a, rem a reminder, uh, you start with two wires, then you stand the main branch according to the distal reference, and then you do a proximal optimization technique with a balloon at the level of the carina, so you have a perfect a position of the stand proximal and distal, and you respect the fractal law. So the risk of occlusion of side branch is very, very good. So after that, you assess the results in the main branch, and there is many ways to do that, and you assess the result in the side branch. And if you are happy with uh, this result, maybe you will leave that, like that. So this is uh, coming from uh, Dr. Ku showing how you can push the carina and close the side branch. So this is before stenting and after stenting, just by non-respecting the fractal law. So this is a very important point. And this is an example how to solve this issue of occlusion just because you use a stent which is too big. So this is a case where you put a stent according to the proximal reference, you push the carina and you close the side branch. And if you are not able to reopen the side branch, you can use a wire which is outside of the stent with a small balloon to reopen the vessel to have a flow in the side branch and then you will be able to find the side branch from the main branch stent. And then you can do kissing balloon inflation, pot on kissing balloon inflation and you may end with a very good result with only one stent. Keep it open, as I said, is part of the provisional strategy. So after evaluation of the side branch, you are happy with the result, and this is the keep it open strategy. If you are not happy with the result, you think that the side branch deserves further intervention, then you can rewire the side branch with uh, the main branch wire or with a third wire, at aiming at achieving a distal rewiring because we know that we have better results when you do kissing by inflation, and then you can do side branch dilatation followed by kissing balloon, side branch dilatation followed by kissing balloon and repot proximally, and side branch dilatation and only repot. And then you will reassess the result, and of course, if you are happy with the result, procedure is finished. If you are not happy with the result, then you will use a stent for treating the side branch, and there is many options. I will not go into details. But the need for side branch stenting in non bifurcation lesion will be less than 10%. So the remaining question is when to open the side branch after main branch stenting? Because of relevance or because of long term outcomes, or both? So relevance, as you know, a branch that may be source of ischemia, more than 10% of the myocardium after the procedure. So there, may, there is many ways to uh, assess that. Uh, the simpler way is to use uh, a reference larger than 2.25, a longer side branch more than 73 millimeters according to previous data. And we have also a, a, a strategy from KU according to the angiographic uh, uh, data. So for long-term outcomes, I think it's very important to reposition the carina in the center. And you can do that only by using a kissing balloon inflation at the end. And this is a source of mid or long-term restenosis. So not having the center in the carina is uh, creating areas of low shear stress, promoting low endotalization. For long-term outcome, also, I want to have further access to the side branch that may be stented in the future. So this is probably mainly for the left man, but it can be also for side branch, large side branch, like uh, when you have a unique diagonal branch or you are treating the PLA, PDA bifurcation with a large PLA. And the last one, and now we are seeing a lot of patients who have this kind of problem to avoid 
endothelialization of the unopened cells. We have seen pseudo restenosis due to this, not proliferation, just endothelialization of the, of the struts. So in daily practice, we always start with two wires or more, if we have uh, other side branch to protect, assess the side branch relevance. When it is relevant, we always open the main branch toward the side branch, aiming at crossing a distal cell in order to have a very good result with one stent, and then the procedure with a final kiss after having done a pot. If we are in doubt uh, about the result after the final kissing balloon inflation, we use FFR, and if the FFR is, is positive, then we will stand the side branch, and then again it will be less than 10% of cases. So my conclusion is that the keep it open is part of the pre side branch stenting strategy. Protect the side branch if you don't want to lose it. Uh, in my center, the cutoff point is 1.5 millimeter for protection, not for treatment, but just protection. Optimally, optimizing membrane vessel stenting is far more important than correcting on geographic appearance of a side branch. And we have many cases where you have a short lesion of the side branch, which is not significant by FFR. Membrane stent sizing, according to distal reference and pot, is a very nice way to avoid carina shifting. And we underestimate this problem. And pot kiss relocate the carina as a flow divider and give access to the side branch. And finally, think twice before stenting the side branch. Thank you very much for your attention. So uh, we have time for questions. Are there any questions from the panel? Yes. Yeah, one question about the I angle. Of I, the I always have a question for Thierry. So. <laughs> Uh, Thierry, you, you explained something that we are saying since a long time, which is we choose the, the stent from the diameter of the main vessel, main distal vessel, main distal vessel. And, but how do you me measure it? Is it, is it uh, media to media IVUS? Is it OCT or is it ANGIO, QCA? How do you measure it? Uh, so in my center is ANGIO, but the reference diameter is estimated according to uh, the normal part of the vessel. So sometimes we don't know what is uh, the size of the vessel because it's diseased. So we can calculate, and this is what we are doing every day. If we know two reference, the proximal main vessel and the side branch, then we can calculate the size of the main branch. On the opposite, if you know the main branch, and uh, we had the discussion in the previous cases, uh, what should be the size of this left main, you know, because you can have be the reference of yeah. the LED and the reference of the circ, and then you can calculate. And in this case, I think it was about four millimeter, but we measure it uh, by IVUS, it was 3.5. So in my opinion, we should have increased the size of the stent in the left man in order to, to follow the anatomy of, of the patient. Uh, what, what about choosing the diameter from media to media in IVUS? So for media to media, because you have a, a, a glaco glagoff effect, so the, the, when there is disease, the vessel is increasing in size, so the size of media to media is overestimating the size of the vessel, just because of the glago glagoff effect. So it's very important not to follow this rule because you have a too big stent and then you create areas of low shear stress. And, and you can close the side branch. And of course, you can close the side branch by pushing the carina, yes. Any further questions? Uh, I have a question. There's a lot of talk about the strategy of, of pot, side, pot. What do you think about that rather than kissing? Yeah. So, uh, as you know, Gérard Finet was a promoter of this technique. Uh, we have started to do some cases uh, three years ago. And finally, we decide to go back to our classical technique of pot and kiss, and sometimes final pot, uh, because uh, we saw by angiography that the carina was, especially for the left man, the carina was never where she, w she should be uh, at the end of the procedure. So uh, finally, we decide uh, to stop uh, using this technique. And you, you have shown last, uh, yesterday and today that uh, it's not the optimal approach. 
So I fully agree with you. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Any questions from the audience? Yes. Yeah. Uh, thank you. One question. What are the predictors of carina shift in bifurcation stenting? So there, there, is, there is many. The, the, I think the main predictor is the stent size. So if the stent is too large, you will push the carina. Uh, there is also a calcification opposite to the side branch. So if you, if you have a big calcification when you deploy the stent, you will push the carina, even if you, are a, you have a correct size. And there is also many, uh, many uh, predictors, but I think these, these two are the most important. There is another one Thank that you. was uh, described by Alfonso Medina, was uh, the anatomical aspect of the carina. When it's thin and long, it can move easily. When, in the, like in the left main, it's thick and short, it cannot move. But you, you need IVs to... Uh, of course. To, to, to understand if you have a long uh, carina. Do you think the B angle has anything to do with the carina shift? Yes. Also, yes, of course. But it's less clear less than the, the side of the stent and the big calcified plate opposite to the side branch. But of course, why shape bifurcation increase the risk of, uh, of side branch occlusion? Despite there is a Two studies, one is showing that it's true China. and the other no, one is showing that it's not true. So, uh. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Actually, my question is about it's doing the kissing balloon in a provisional stenting using a DCP. If there is any data about using the DCP in doing the kissing, during the kissing in the provisional stenting? In my opinion, there is no data. No data yet. Maybe, uh, John, you have some information? No. No. Um, um, I, I don't think you wanted, I, I don't know whether the, the drug coated balloon is a good balloon to do kissing, uh, you know, to increase the size of the vessel. I think it's good to uh, get the vessel looking as good as possible before you use any drug coated yeah. balloon. Yeah, I, I agree. I think we should do a kiss with a conventional balloon and especially non compliant balloon for the side branch. Uh, but of course, if you do a kiss with uh, two drug editing stents, maybe. Uh, it should be done after, mm. and uh, the amount of drug proximal to the bifurcation will be high, so we, we, we don't know, we don't know. There's a question over here. Okay. Yeah, it's just, um, I don't know, you ever um, think about, when you dilate with the uh, side branch balloon, I normally do the positive pressure forward as I'm dilating to get the strut go this direction to the side branch. And after that, then I do the kissing to just patch up the whatever the distortion of the stent strut. Do you ever look into this? Because when you dilate the balloon, the strut will be expand the side and it will distort the architecture. So if I push forward, I don't know if the side branch will be better in a stent strut. Yeah, I think the most important is to go through a distal strut because if you go through a proximal strut, we will not have any coverage of the side branch, but if you go through the distal strut, then you push the stent in the side branch, then you have one millimeter or 1.5 millimeter of side branch coverage with a main branch stent. So you have nearly something like a dedicated stent for bifurcation with a very short ostial scaffolding of the side branch with a main branch stent. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, next speaker is Dr. Dogberg from Asthma Medical Center, Korea. And uh, his topic this afternoon is left main bifurcation. You have enough time. Okay, okay thank ahead. you. So at this TCTAP 2019, we, gonna sh we already showed the very diverse case of the digital left main bifurcation case. So I'm going to summarize some of the, our Asam Medical Center left main bifurcation treatment strategies. Uh, current status uh, distal and main bifurcation. So uh, this is uh, my representative case, 68 uh, EML with a stable angina, and the looking at the region, it looks like a very top uh, ramus branch is very tight, suck ostium is very tight, LED ostium as well as distal and main is, looks very tight. So spider view is uh, definitely looks ugly, and uh, you know this case uh, is encountered in our routine PCI practice commonly. 
So uh, I, uh, I did a uh, crush and crush and uh, triple crush is, uh, you know, some uh, Ramos branch as well as a circle osteum and then final crossover and then do kissing, kissing balloon dilation. This is uh, uh, our final, the angiogram is crush distal main bifurcation spiral view. This is a practice also our routine left main PCI practice. So looking at the distal left main, the bifurcation, every bifurcation almost different looking at the anatomic diversity and as shown in our live case demonstration, some case true distal main, some case 101, some case 111, even in 111 true distal main bifurcation, morphology was different. You know, some case focal moderate lesion, some case focal severe region inside the branch, and sometimes diffuse side the branch region, depending on anatomic and depending on the imaging concept, we is a you know, dynamic the change of our treatment strategy. The side branch important, especially for distal left main is very, very important. So the looking at the angiographic finding, distal left main, if you're gonna think about distal left main, only angiographic concept, too much complex. There are angle, curve, diameter, and the longitudinal, there are geographic, is too much things uh, we should consider in the angiographic concept. But if you think about the uh, uh, functional concept, and uh, usually uh, this is a very well-known slide, the revascularization benefit is a large ischemic myocardial burden more than 10%, revascularization was better. Side branch PCI usually less than 10%, but that is a non lemmain main bifurcation region. Looking at the distal lemmain main bifurcation region, side branch important, this is the CTFFR myocardial mass, Lem main region, most of the suck is more than 10%. Non lem main region, usually less than 10%. That is emphasized how the important suck osteum side branch. So, and the distal lem main bifurcation, we usually, this is a well known slide, the side branch important. Main decision is mainly dictated by side branch, true, uh, non true, and the side branch size and angle and distribution is like that. And this is the current PCI strategy. Our strategy is similar. Lem main bifurcation, complex the true bifurcation is inside the branch more than 70% and the length was more than 10. Initially upfront two stand strategy we select. Side branch diameter stenosis is less than seven. Looks like a simple. Easy side branch access is expected. We do provisional stenting. Easy side branch branch access not uh, expected we do sometimes upfront to stand strategy. Looking at the updated data and the DK crush five showering chain performed, they confine stratified the simple region and the complex region, regardless the simple region, regardless the complex region, provisional stenting was worse than DK crush. DK crush was uh, better in one year target region failure. The key message of the DK crush trial shows the, you know, some target vessel MI was higher, target region revascularization much higher. Key message, don't do one stand for true distal lemme main bifurcation region. Looking at the Excel subgroup analysis is a provisional one stand versus two stand. Usually distal lemme main bifurcation region provisional one stand was better, but the interesting part is they define the provisional, the, the two side branch was uh, affected, that is a true bifurcation region. Usually there was no difference provisional one stand, planned two stand. Interesting finding is that just one side of branch was involved, that means non-true bifurcation region, definitely provisional stenting was statistically better than planned two stent. That means true, true bifurcation region, provisional planned is okay, non-true bifurcation region, less is more. So real world data is lacking, you know, lemme main bifurcation region, we merged analysis using largest real world lemme main database, this database is uh, already published in the JAG, and uh, we compared the different second generation drug learning stand lem main disease. There is no difference. We use the same merged analysis database, and uh, we select uh, uh, iris main and iris DS registry. Digital lem main bifurcation defined 111011 LED suck diameter more than 2.5. 
So in the 17,000 patients in the total two bifurcation region, 1,000 patients was remain, 440 patients was a simple strategy, 562 patients uh, the underwent a two-stand strategy, com complex strategy. This is unadjusted three-year event rate, and the primary endpoint was target lesion failure, cardiovascular death, target vessel MI, TRR was tend to be higher in the, uh, the dual stand and the cardiac death, and the target vessel MI, target lesion revascularization, not statistically significant. This is the final IPTW propensity adjusted three-year event rate tend to be higher with the dual stand, but not statistically different. Cardiac death, target vessel MI, target region revascularization was not statistically significant, but tend to be higher with the two stand. This is the same with the propensity score matching. Dual stenting group, target lesion failure tend to be higher, but not statistically significant. Cardiac death, target vessel MI similar. TRR tend to be higher dual stenting, but not statistically significant. So, and the TCTAP live case, we show the many, many technique, Gullo technique, DK crush, and mini crush, and nowadays the modified tap technique three is the most commonly used stand. And any difference according to different two stand technique, definitely different indication according to physician experience, anatomy, very limited data, comparative effectiveness study among the different the strategy and uh, might be a small difference in soft endpoint, not uh, any big difference in hard endpoint like uh, death or MI. And the IBUS impact is that uh, everybody know well, you know, some, if you achieve the five, six, seven, eight, uh, IBUS defined the minimal stand cross section area, is that means uh, long term outcome was uh, good. Is, uh, you know, we show them many, many cases. A uh, circle osteum is uh, more than five, and uh, LA is six, a POC polygon of a confluence more than seven, distal lemmain more than eight. That means maize rate was better, TRL rate was excellent, like a provisional stenting. If you're going to select two stand strategy, that rule is, a, is a very, very important. So IBUS impact on clinical outcome, there are many data, especially for distal lemmain bifurcation, and this is Excel trial. After checking the IBUS, there, there are practice, PCI pattern was changed, you use larger balloon, post dilated, use high pressure, stand under expansion treaty, there are more aggressive uh, the PCI strategy. So many data shows the main compare registry, I was the Trinco ICP registry, SCAR registry shows the definitely better uniformly. IBUS guided was better than angiographic alone, especially in lemmain main disease. And this is a remarkable study. Our study shows the IBUS guidance saved life. So, and uh, this is uh, the, one of the typical case and shows the, how much important the IBUS guide is. So, and uh, after stenting crossover, how do we do? There was some angiographically gelling. At this time, we usually do FFR, and then FFR is okay, just leave it alone. There was some combination, integration, use of the imaging and FFR. So, and uh, what is the ongoing next future trial? This is EBC main trial. They are targeting two lemmain main bifurcation region and then randomization plan the provisional stenting strategy versus uh, plan the dual stand strategy. It's uh, one or two years later and uh, the, you know, result of this compelling trial would be available. So this is my last slide. This the lemmain main bifurcation region, how do we treat? Provisional approach is recommended in many of distal lemmain bifurcation region for ambiguous cycle branch narrowing before or after main branch stenting. Consider FFR freely, and the side branch strategy with a functional concept can simplify the procedure, make a good clinical decision for complex through bifurcation region. Proper two stand technique make a comparable outcome to provisional one stand technique. Whatever you use, any type of two stand technique, imaging concept five, six, seven, eight rule can make a good clinical outcome. This is my final disclosure for distal lemmain main bifurcation. I'm Ibus Harlick. I'm FFR believer. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Dr. Dagobak. Uh, any questions or comments? So perhaps uh, Dr. Louvard might like to comment on um, the DK crush left main results 
and why Thank are they you, discrepant John. from the European results? Thank you, John. I will, I will repeat again with three points. If you look at the survival curves in, in DK Crush 5, you see that the uh, endpoint is, is, is done 15 days before the clinical endpoint. And this is the result of uh, systematic coronary performed before the endpoint, the clinical endpoint. When you do a trial with a clinical endpoint, don't do coronary angiography before. It's known since uh, Benestan 2 that he has a great influence of the reintervention rate, which was not done based on FFR. The second point, more important, is that uh, it's, it, this, uh, this study was done in patients with the side branch was always the circumflex, and the circumflex lesion was in mean 16 millimeter. But in one group, the so-called provisional, uh, which is a strategy that can be ended systematically by 100% double stunting. Uh, in, uh, in this trial, only 47% of patients receive a stent in such a lesion. Again, we know that since the 80s, uh, 16 millimeter long lesion, tight lesion in the ostium of circumplex cannot be treated with a balloon. So it's unfair comparison. And the third one, and uh, maybe this is uh, uh, what Thierry will, will, will say now, the third one, the provisional strategy was not well performed at all. Um, what was missing frequently, systematic double ki uh, kissing was, was also missing in the left main. So these are important factors to, uh, to, uh, uh, for us in European Bifurcation Club not to consider uh, that DK crush is the default technique for uh, a complex uh, distal left main lesion. So, so I, I have one question for, you know, some master, master bifurcation, little really favor and Ruva, the, you know, the, how do you expect a result of EBC main trial, you know, TK crush 5 trial, 2 stand was better, better than provisional stenting. Is it, do you think about First, the same uh, result or not? The trial is now, uh, will, will end, uh, the inclusion will end in December, so we are still far from the end. We need, we'll need one year follow-up. So it uh, will be, uh, oh yeah, in 2011, 2021. And uh, what we do with respect, first, I think the lesion will be less complex than in, uh, in uh, DK Coach 5, because we recommend to do in, in, uh, in true bifurcation lesion, with, but with five millimeter long, long lesion in, in the circumflex. So I, I, I don't know, of course, but I think it will be less complex than uh, what we observe. And uh, I've been many times in, in China, and uh, the coronary disease there is not the same as in France, I think. It's the same also for mm -hmm. India and other countries of Asia. Mm -hmm. So we may have different, uh, different results. But we cannot, we cannot say today, we don't have any reason to tell that uh, systematically deploying two stent in a complex bifurcation is better with the crush than with provisional with 100% crossover. We don't know. We have no data. Mm -hmm. Okay, Dr. Yeah, uh, I, I would like just uh, add something about... Uh, it's, we're not, uh, we can't hear you. Mi microphone? Can, can you hear me? Oh. No. Maybe you go to this. Can you? Oh, okay. Yes, that's it. Um, yeah, I would like just add something positive about CRUSH. Uh, because the CRUSH was invited by Antonio Colombo many years ago because he, he missed a T stenting technique. So, because the stent was not, not uh, prolabbing in the main branch, he decided to crush the stent. And then the, this technique uh, made a lot of progress since 10 years. Mm. So, we had uh, mini CRUSH, uh, micro CRUSH, and then uh, Dr. Shen invented the DK crush technique. And the DK crush technique was created in order to be able to finalize the procedure with kissing balloon inflation. Because we knew since 10 years that if you are not able to do a final kiss, the risk of mess is very high. So today we are hearing about crush, mini crush, DK crush, it's quite the same. Mm. No, it's not the same. DK crush helps you to finalize the procedure with kissing balloon inflation at the end. If you don't do a DK crush, you will end with a kissing in 80-85% uh, of kissing, no more. If you do a DK crush, you will end with 
close to 100% of case with the final keys. So this is very important. I'm not a fan of Dika Crush, but I think if you use a crush technique, it should be a Dika Crush technique. Dr. Pa? So at the first time, uh, at the, the early stage of your presentation, you have showed a very fine case of triple case with three stands. Of course, uh, the three, by using the, the three stands in bifurcating region, it's not uh, common, but uh, is, uh, is that, did that case already include the two stand group or something? Yes, uh, uh, you know, so the, we, we uh, the depending on strategy, that patient shows the, you know, multiple uh, salium defect, and as well as we checked the FFR, the each Ramos branch, circle branches, all was, uh, you know, some less than 0 0.8, and so size is big, and we decided usually, you know, the we did, uh, some small vessel, we didn't do, uh, we just the provisional standing, but the larger vessel, clinically relevant, uh, uh, side branch, we try to save, uh, you know, some upfront to two, two or three standing, yeah. I have uh, also a question for you about your case. Uh, uh, we discussed during this meeting uh, the relationship between complexity of lesion treated, especially the number of stents and especially bifurcation, and the duration of DAP. So what will, what will be the duration of DAP for this patient? Sorry, what? The duration of DAP treatment for this uh, patient. De DAP treatment? For, for the patient you showed. Yeah. What will be? Yeah, usually depth of aspirin and clopidogrel. I mean, yes. Yeah, so yeah, usually but the, the duration, the time. Yeah, duration is a, you know depending on the physician. I, for me, at least one year. The Sung Jong Bak, sometimes some difference. At least two year. Some physician after one year just the omission of aspirin just to keep the plavix. You know some, but uh, I think uh, nowadays. Uh, most of us tend much safer and much smarter, and the, even though complex uh, uh, lab main stenting, I think at least the one year is okay. Is it some overall the more extended duration is some difference according to physician preference and the physician concern, something like that. So thank you very much. Um, I think we've had a very interesting session. We've seen two excellent cases, live cases, and. Uh, particularly Dr. Colombo's demonstration of how to do provisional stenting in a left main was a textbook description. Uh, and then we saw the very interesting uh, drug coded Berlin for, uh, in, for instant restenosis. And we've also had some really interest, two very interesting lectures. So thank you very much. And thank you to the panel too.